So I've just taken delivery of the new Wahoo Kicker bike. We first saw this bike at Eurobike in 2019, and it's got to be said we were pretty excited. UK stock didn't become available till March 2020, and up until now we haven't been able to get hold of one. We finally now have one to test. The plan was to do an unboxing video. However, the unit arrived already built and out of the box, so I can't show you removing it from the box and building it from scratch. However, it did arrive at my doorstep thus, um, and I live in a fairly old 1930s house with a spiral staircase, so it just was not possible to get it up the stairs with those legs on. However, having taken them off, it was fairly easy, it weighs 40kg, so between my husband and myself that's 20kg each, and it wasn't too much of a mission. Right, so I will show you the unit where it is now. So as I said, the bike arrived basically set up, taken the legs off to bring it up the stairs, uh, that was fairly simple, added them back on, now we're upstairs. What I do quite like is that there are wheels on the back, so you can move it around pretty easily. One of the things I really like about this bike is the huge amount of adjustability there is available. One thing that I did notice is that the minimum height recommendation is five foot and the maximum is six foot four. The people that come outside of that are going to be a minority. However, it could present an issue and especially if you decided you wanted to buy the bike for an entire family unit to use. However, all being well, if you fit between those measurements, you just simply download the Wahoo app and you'll be presented with a fit wizard. Now there are three different options and they're on a sliding scale in terms of accuracy. So the most accurate option is to enter data from a professional bike fit. That could be a Rettle bike fit, Trek Precision or Guru bike fit. The next option is to take a photo of your bike uh, and then enter a couple of additional measurements. And finally, you can enter your height, inseam measurement, and also tell it how aggressive you want your position to be. The most accurate option is to enter bike fit data. So that is what I've done using a Rettle bike fit. So then it spits out for me various metrics that work using the fit tools on the bike itself. Okay, so data point number one is standover height and it wants me to set this to A. So there's a lever here, which I pull towards myself pull out this and then I can just raise or lower that to A. Saddle height goes to 14.1. This comes out here, go to 14.1. Close that back up. Setback goes to 5.6. So this comes out here. We increase that to 5.6. So the reach it's given me is 8.0. I'm actually going to cheat and reduce that to seven based on the fact that these are assumed 40 centimeter handlebars and I usually ride a 36 or a 38. So I'm just going to dial that back a little bit to seven, which is where it is now. Uh, and then handlebar height, it wants it on one. So that comes out there. Bars go up and down. There we go. And then finally to set my pedals up on the correct crank length. Uh, I've gone for 165, but you have the options of 170, 172.5 or 175. So there is an awful lot of different options there. So what I should have now is a bike that fits me pretty perfectly. includes an awful lot of features that are designed to make indoor riding feel more like outdoor riding. One of the most exciting features perhaps is the changes in gradient. So there's just buttons on the top here and these will increase to a gradient of plus 20 percent. Now I haven't actually increased the resistance in line with that so it's feeling very very strange. If you were to increase the resistance like so it really does mirror riding outside. I have to admit, initially I didn't really think this was a gimmick. Might make it more fun, more interesting, but wouldn't really have many kind of fitness implications. I think actually there I was wrong, because when you really, really ramp it up on an incline, you are using different muscle groups. And that is probably something that I didn't really take into account. And it does feel really different. So I can see that being really, really useful. 
Um, it also does mirror a minus 15% downhill gradient. You can use the handlebar buttons to do that here, or you can also hook it up to the likes of the Zwift Virtual World. One thing that is really nice is the ride feel. The power comes from an electromagnetic flywheel, which is very similar to the one that Tax uses on the likes of the Neo. This is connected to a belt drive via the crank set, and it feels mega smooth. I'm finding that my cadence is naturally much higher than when I'm on the turbo trainer and my own bike, which is really handy as, especially during lockdown, I'm really missing the quick cadence training that I would usually get at sessions at Hern Hill Velodrome. So Wahoo has developed its own shifters, and these can be set up to mirror Shimano, SRAM or Campagnolo. You can also set your chainring sizes, so I've gone for 5236, semi-compact, which is what I'm riding most of the time, and an 1128 at the rear. The bike is both AMP Plus and Bluetooth compatible. I'm going to be testing it hooked up to Zwift, but you can also hook it up to the likes of Road Grand Tours or the Sufferfest or Trailer Road. One thing that is worth noting is that there isn't any sort of screen um, and there isn't anywhere to place a screen. So I'm going to be using my Apple iPad that I've got leaning against a couple of water bottles on the windowsill. We have in the past tested the Watt Bike Atom and that did come with uh, an integrated holder for a screen and I can certainly see the use for that. Now currently indoor platforms such as Swift don't actually support braking. Wahoo has actually developed this for use in the future. The bike is really heavy coming in at 40 kg so it is heavier than the likes of a turbo trainer with your bike fitted as well. In here I'm actually more worried about the floorboards than I am the bike. The resistance on offer is 2200 watts, which is the same as you would get from the Tax Neo 2 or the Wahoo Kicker. It's not as much as the likes of the Watt Bike Pro, which comes in at 3760. But you can really push against things. The steel and alloy body and its pure heft gives you more confidence than when you're sprinting on your own bike on the turbo trainer. When you shift between the chain rings you'll get a slight pause and a mini jolt just like you would on the road. And I also found I got some flex and movements in the bars when sprinting, which allowed for more movement and felt very natural. So this has been very much a first look at what it's like when the bike arrives in your home and how to set it up. It comes in at £3,099, so it's certainly a quite hefty investment. Is it worth it? Well, we will be running a full review in one to two months time, so look out for that. If you've got any questions about the bike, pop them in the comments. We'd love to answer as many as we can. If you did like this video, please hit like and subscribe if you want to see more videos from Cycling Weekly in the future. Hope to see you soon.